What's up everyone and welcome back for another episode of the Accessible Technology Podcast with me, Phoebe Slow. This is a podcast all about how everyday technology can become more accessible for disabled people. And although I sometimes do reactions in this, I also sometimes do reviews, unboxings, tutorials, because honestly it's just really about giving my advice to other disabled people on what sort of technology is most accessible for them and also giving that advice to their families. And I also enjoy giving tips to technology companies on how they can keep on making their technology even more accessible. If you would like to follow the podcast and help out with supporting everything else I do and listen to accessible technology, you can help out by just following the Accessible Technology Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music or Audible or Spotify depending which of those is your favourite. And I also have a technology channel where you can watch video versions of the main bit of audio that is in all of these episodes because all of them come from the videos that I upload to my channel, PL Tech Reviews. However, if you'd like to support the podcast and the content I produce in other ways, you can also support it by going over to the Thieves Now Buy Me A Coffee page, where you will also be able to find exclusive episodes that aren't part of the podcast as well as checking out a shop that I plan to open at some stage where you'll be able to buy other products so please consider checking it out. And I'm now happy to announce that some exclusive content will be coming up soon in just a few episodes, so please keep an eye out for it and join a membership to join to see it if you want to check it out. As soon as I get all of that uploaded. In this episode, we're going to be hearing a review that I did all about Mac OS Sonoma, uh, in which I give all of my thoughts on it and describe everything that I think is good and that I think is bad. Let's jump straight into the review. Mac OS Sonoma is an operating system for Apple's MacBook laptops that is part of the iOS 17 family with access to new screen servers, widgets that you can add to your desktop better video conferencing support and more advanced Safari experience, a new messaging system and much more. You will get a software update that will seem bigger and better than anything you've seen before and from my own experience it is fantastic. One of the biggest updates to macOS this year is the fact 
that's how you can noise let new slow motion screen savers of different breathtaking locations from around the world similar to everything that you have on the Apple TV when it goes into standby mode from China to Dubai to London to New York and San Francisco, the underwater world and more. These screens here first will look breathtaking on any M1 Mac and later. There are also some versions of them that even supply an extremely realistic feeling to them, especially in the underwater scenes that include animals such as dolphins and humpback whales and seriously they are really really impressive however while the screen samples you can choose from currently are beautiful there are a couple of things that i'm really not happy about with them where well, honestly I would really love more choice. I would like to see more countries other than the ones that are on offer at the minute being available as a screen saver too such as Spain which I am really really Fond of and hope to get back over to soon. But it would also be nice if you had an option to turn your own slow motion videos and clips into screen savers as well, like we have when we have the option to save one of your photos as a screen saver as well as the ability to choose screen savers that are slow motion mac os sonoma also lets us add widgets to our desktop like we were previously only able to do on the iphone and on the ipad by right clicking on the Mac desktop, you just have to go down to the Edit Widgets option. Then you'll just have to drag whatever that is onto the desktop. And as soon as you do that, you're all ready to go. With whatever you happen to change your mind about a widget, you also have an extremely easy way of removing it as all you have to do in that case is right click on the widget that you want to remove and then go down to remove widget. Another thing that has been updated is the video conferencing features you have a choice between two overlays, one which is large and one which is small. But there are a couple of differences between these. The large overlay will help keep the spotlight on you alone with your screen framed next to you in a separate layer and you can even move, walk and talk in front of your content which will be very good for those who do move a lot but if you use the small overlay instead you will appear in a movable button over your shared screen and this will also make 
it's easy for me to move around the screen and to point out any important details. Another feature you'll have access to, however, is a new screen sharing picker that includes an option that is called Share on Zoom and elsewhere on video chat. You can even react with your hands to add reactions that will fill the camera frame. But honestly, that feature is something I have mixed feelings about which I would like more in my conclusion. But on another note, another feature that you also have is that you can control the composition of the video when you see studio display. And you can also use either your iPhone camera or an iPad camera as the FaceTime camera went on a video call. As well as this, there's also many new features that Safari has got, which all deserve to be mentioned. So here's all of them laid out for you now. For starters, you can create a profile to help keep your browsing private, even allowing you to keep everything separate into private windows and personal windows, which are both extremely easy to enter in and out of. You can also separate your history extensions, tab groups, cookies and favourites into separate sections. That isn't, however, the only feature that makes the Safari experience better in macOS Sonoma, as you also get the ability to create web apps and to turn any website that you visit frequently into an app. Having been available on the iPhone and iPad at this point for a few years, the days are now gone when you wish your favourite website would be available as an app or when you aren't that happy with the look of a certain app and this it would be available in a different format. To turn a website into a web app on your Mac, the first thing you'll have to do is to go over to that website on whatever Safari search engine you use. As soon as you get over to the website that you want to turn into a web app, you'll then just need to go up to File. And as soon as you move your mouse down onto the Add, to dock option, you'll then want to click an option will come up that lets you rename the web app if you want to with your mouse. But then as soon as you're happy with whatever the title says, all you need to do then is to click done. And as soon as you click either done with your mouse or click enter with your keyboard, the app will be available as a web app. There are also 
Clearly advanced features that have made it over two messages, which I will start outlining now. For starters, you'll be able to find the message you're looking for faster by combining search features to help narrow your search. If you can't be bothered looking through all these different message chats to find a particular message that you're looking for. And there's also a new catch up owl that will let you jump to the first available message you haven't seen or replied to. There's also a new feature that will help parents keep an eye on children that also lets them report to you when they have safely made it to whichever destination they are travelling to and that is with a new feature called checking. However, the best new messages feature thought of my experience with macOS, Sonoma and and iOS 17 has to be the new stickers feature which is absolutely amazing and has been updated to let you turn your live photos and other photos into stickers and what makes this better is that you'll be able to sync your stickers with iCloud so you will be able to access them on a Mac, on an iPad and on an iPhone. However, something I'm not too happy with in relation to all of these features is that they are only available on the Messages app and not currently available on third party apps such as WhatsApp. However, that is due to change come the end of the year or in the new year. The Notes app, PDFs and Pages have also been updated as well and machine learning has also been enhanced so much that you can now order for any important information that you have saved to your ID and then put all of that onto a PDF or form that you want to fill out. These aren't the only updates, however, because even if your keyboard has received an update, which includes a more accurate version of AutoCraft, a more accurate version of AutoCraft. This version of AutoCraft delivers even better support for you as you type. Starting with auto-corrected words being temporarily underlined so you can keep an eye on what has been changed. However, another feature that is new is that you will spot predictions in line with what you're typing as you type which will appear in light grey and if you're happy with what your prediction says 
You can add the words um, by just either clicking um, the on your keyboard or by left clicking with your trackpad or mouse. The new communication features, security features and to see features, you'll have access to your Mac OS and include protections for sensitive photos and videos, which even extends beyond messages to include safety options that will warn you if there's any explicit content that has been sent or received in a photo picker and other third party apps. And you also have the option to blur sensitive content. So in conclusion, with access to stunning screen savers, the ability to add widgets to the desktop and the ability to turn websites into apps within just a few clicks. I think this version of iOS is my favourite compared to everything else that has been released over the last few years. No, I'm not happy with everything and there are some things I would like to see such as more screen saver options and the ability to add um, slow motion clips to save as a screen saver and there are also some problems I've had with web apps. One of my web apps doesn't seem to offer a back option which is extremely annoying because it is a shopping web app. Another thing however that I am disappointed in is that you seem to only be able to have access to giving reactions and to reactions coming up on the screen if you can move your hands which makes it really difficult for paralyzed people such as myself to get any enjoyment out of this. A workaround for this would be for an option to give reactions digitally to be available on the screen and a way show up menu so that you can access them by just using a keyboard or a mouse so if that could be introduced there would be nothing else I would change with it. Mac OS, Sonoma and the other iOS 17 software are available to download now and it is compatible with the 2017 iMac Pro and later the 2018 MacBook Pro and later the 2018 Mac Mini and later the 2018 MacBook Air and later the 2019 iMac and later the 2019 Mac Pro and later the 2021 M1 series of Mac computers and later 
the 2022 M2 series of Mac computers and the other the 2022 Mac Studio and later and of course 2020 these MacBooks. So now that you know all about it, what do you think about Mac OS? So no Mac and have you downloaded it yet? And if you have downloaded it, what are your favourite features or is there anything else you would also improve as well? Well, if you would like to give me any of your thoughts and feelings about it, you can send all of those over to me via either a review of this podcast, wherever you are listening to it on. You can listen to this podcast by searching for it over on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Audible, and on Spotify. But of course, there is also the Buy Me A Coffee page again. And that's where you'll be able to find some exclusive episodes of this podcast that aren't actually part of it. Plus, you'll have the opportunity to give me a one-time donation. However, if you would also like to send your thoughts over to me in a different way, you can reach out to me via the... Contact pages over on my pltechreviews.co.uk website, which is linked in the description for episode notes below. And you can also send your thoughts to me over on the contact page on my vbilau.com website which is also linked below and which I'm going to get back to uploading posts to soon. And of course there's my PL Tech Reviews YouTube channel. Anyway, thanks for listening to the podcast and I'll tell you about more of iOS or trails in the next episode that comes out which is going to be about iOS 17 for the iPhone and for the iPad and then I'll also be bringing out reviews. Anyway, as I said, hope you enjoyed the podcast and this is Steve Slough with the Accessible Technology Podcast. Out. Bye!